All right, Matt. So I got another reaction video for you. Okay. People seem to like the Brian Johnson we'll one. We'll see so. how this goes. Yeah. So <laughs> this is Dr. Mike Isretel. He is a professor, I believe, in New York. Uh, Renaissance Periodization is a YouTube channel. He's a really great source for gaining muscle, fat loss, just like, you know, hypertrophy in general. So one of my go-to channels is I'd recommend him for our audience who's interested in that. And he did a reaction on Brian Johnson. That's not what we want to talk about. The last five or so minutes, he broke down just his sort of pillars and framework for longevity. Okay. And while I was watching it, I went, I want to get Matt's opinion on this. So. Okay. So I have not seen this and I don't know anything about this guy. Okay. All right. Great. Let's do it. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I'm going to take this opportunity to tell you guys the big rocks of how to make sure you enhance your longevity. There's just a few of them that take care of something like 90% of what's going on. Let me see if I got this off the top of my head. Time to see if I went to school for anything at all. None of these are ranked in order, but they're all super important. And there's just a few of them. One is make sure you're not excessively heavy like I am currently right now. The lighter <laughs> you are, so long as you're still healthy and have a decent level of muscle mass and can squat your body weight 10 times or more, the lighter you are, generally speaking, the longer you live. That also relates uh, to the fact that you just don't eat as much food. That's how you stay lighter. And that's your metabolism just doesn't run as much or as fast. The total cumulative me metabolic output you've had over your life decreases, and thus the probability that you'll run into the fraying issues later goes down substantially. So rule number one is try to stay on the lighter side. Of so, okay, so I generally agree with what he said. I think the one thing that's um, a little bit unclear here, and we did an episode on the relationship between body size and, and longevity. It is true that within a species, smaller individuals tend to age more slowly and live longer. That's true in dogs or a really obvious example, but that's true in people as well. I think what's unclear is whether that relationship is primarily because you have lower levels of growth signals during development, and that's why you have a smaller body size, or if you can get a majority of the those benefits by reducing body size later in life. So in general, one of the one of the encouraging things I think that we've learned is that you can do a lot late in life to improve your health span, your future disease risk, your longevity. Mm -hmm. It's not completely clear that reducing your body size, being lighter while maintaining a positive body composition has large benefits if you do that later in life. Many of the benefits might actually come from being smaller early, having lower growth signals during development. So you have a smaller adult body size. I'm not saying this is wrong. I'm mm -hmm. just saying, you know, it, th this may not be one of the things that gives you the largest bang for the buck. Okay. Yeah. And a bit of background on him is he's going to compete for another two more years in bodybuilding. He's in his early forties, I believe. Uh, he's like over 240 pounds. And he says, once he retires, he's going to cut down to like 160 because he's on, he's open about his steroid use and he yeah. feels like, yeah. And again, I would, and again, I where the optimal body weight, body size lies, I think we don't know. I think it is probably the case that being 240 pounds is not optimal, regardless of your body composition, because of all the stress it puts on your, not, not just your joints, but your organs, things like that. Um, is 160 optimal? I don't know how tall he is. I, you know, Five, six, I think. Oh, yeah, maybe then. I don't, yeah, yeah I don't know. I, I think I would just be cautious about taking this to the extreme and suggesting that if you, even if you can maintain the same body composition in terms of percent lean mass, percent fat mass, you know, for him going down to 115 might not be optimal, right? Yeah, yeah, 160, yeah. And I know this channel's all about getting jacked and lean, but index more on the lean side and less on the jack side if you want longevity to be maximized. That being said, if you're not abusing anabolic steroids, don't do that. That shit will kill you real goddamn fast. Okay, in truth, it won't kill you fast, but it takes five or 10 or 15 years off the end I like of your this life, guy. depending yeah. on how fucking uh, recklessly you go at it. And also has a chance of killing you kind of any one time from stroke or embolism or something like that. So as long as you're staying drug free, if you have a high degree of muscle mass, but low body fat, so that's point number two, try to be relatively as lean as you can. Now, for guys, that means around 10 to 15%, even a little higher is totally fine. Getting below 10% probably doesn't increase your longevity, might reduce it because of the stress required. For females, it's something like being in the, you know, 18 to 32% body fat range, that is totally fine. So it's not so much having high muscle mass kills you, even though it doesn't help you uh, with your longevity and marginally reduces a tiny bit, even if it's drug-free at the extremes, if you're lean, that counteracts a shitload of that. So even if you weigh like 190 drug-free at like 6'2", 
Could you live longer if you weighed 170? Yeah, almost certainly. But because you're a lean 190, we're talking about a few years, at, you know, between you being 82 when you die and 84 when you die. And again, if you're in your 30s or 40s or 20s listening to this, watching this, I, I, expert opinion on most of these futuristic grounds at this point says that people don't have to die of diseases anymore after about the year 2040. So if you can make it that long, you're good to go. Another point. So, I mean, diet. I think... There's a couple thing, couple things I would just take minor criticism of, but that's pretty solid advice. I think, I think this that you know, it's a very pragmatic approach, and I think the numbers he gives are are pretty solid. Again, the sort of going from 190 to 170, if you've got high high lean mass, yeah. you know, is that guaranteed to give you a couple of extra years? No, mm. it's not. We just don't know. Uh, but you know, I think I think it it's reasonable to say that it might. Um, so I think he might have overstated that a little bit, but by and large, I think that was a pretty good representation. Of, I mean, at least it lines up more or less my opinion on the on the topic. Yeah. Earlier in the video, he talked a lot. He kind of hit, hinted towards it there, the idea of every year you live longer, science is also improving at an exponential rate. So he thinks if you make I mean, it to 2040. Yeah, I, that, that's the other thing I, I think, you know, this is where uh, people who don't understand biology, I think tend to believe some of the, the futurist talk. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I, I, the idea that by 2040, so we're in 2024 now, mm -hmm. that's only 16 years. Mm -hmm. Okay. The idea that by 2040, you're not going to die from disease, I think is almost certainly nonsense. I see. There is absolutely no evidence to support that. If you really think about the length of time it takes to get a drug through FDA approval, we don't have any, so first of all, we don't have any drugs right now or any technologies that suggest that you're not going to have to die from disease. None. Mm -hmm. You might be able to point to epigenetic reprogramming if you believe that we're going to be able to completely reprogram cells safely to the point where they are young again. Okay. That's the only thing I can think of. And even if you had a drug today that would make it so you, in theory, don't have to ever die from disease, it's going to take you a decade to get through the FDA mm -hmm. approval process. We're not six years away from having that drug. Yes. So I, I, again, who knows? Like, yes, maybe the AI overlords will take yeah. over and they will cure biology, right? Yeah. But outside of that, I think it's very unlikely that we're going to get to 2040 and nobody's going to die from disease anymore. Like that is not going to happen. Yeah, the advice you gave is essentially the younger you are now, the less you have to worry about longevity. And the older you are, the more you want to hold on. So you can I think that's it. bad advice. I thought so too, a little bit. I, I think you, I think you want to... Start. I mean, again, we never, nobody knows what the future is going to be, but I certainly would not count on <laughs> the idea that we're going to, in the next 20, 30 years, get to a future where medicine has basically solved aging. Mm. So again, this is where I think if you listen to the, the wrong people, you can be deceived, but there's nothing to suggest that we are getting close to that. And again, I've talked about it on the podcast before. If you look at the interventions that we've got to increase lifespan, nobody's beat caloric restriction in 40 years. Yeah. Yeah. 16 more years. It's like <laughs> Yeah. So, I'm optimistic about the future, but I think we want to be realistically optimistic about the future. That's why I wanted to react to this video because he's, you know, PhD extra science. I really respect him there, but it's interesting to see him come over to your kind of world and kind of where Yeah. how it compares. So. Yeah. All right. Of so number three, eat a healthy diet. Lean protein sources, veggies, fruits, whole grains, and healthy fats. Healthy fats like olive oil, canola oil, avocado oil, generally a ton of plant oils are really good. Seed oils are also really good for your health. You crazy assholes, where do you people come from with the <laughs> seed oil nonsense? Do a fucking PubMed search and see if you can find anything about seed oils being bad. In any case, plants aside, uh, fundamentally awesome. healthy eating and not so much food. And by the way, meal timing almost doesn't matter. You can eat one meal a day. You can eat six meals I, a day. Now I really like this. Yeah, I figured you would. It makes no difference as long as most, not all, most of the food is healthy, minimally processed, loads of lean proteins, fresh as much as possible, veggies, fruits, whole grains, and healthy fats. That is the core standard. Now, here's the thing. You can have a lot of lean proteins and very few carbohydrates and lots of fats. You can have lots of carbohydrates, not so many proteins, enough to keep you going, but not too many, and lower fats. All of it, it doesn't basically matter for longevity. As long as you're not eating gobs of McDonald's all the goddamn time, you're good to go. Yeah. Another part so, of so again, I, I agree completely. That was great. Nice. The only thing I would, I would add to that is that I think it does matter for longevity in the sense that different dietary strategies work for some people and not for others. Mm -hmm. So not everybody will be able to maintain that kind of a healthy diet 
with low protein, high carbs. It'll work better for some people to have high protein, low carbs. Mm. But finding what works for you on top of what he said, I think nails it. Nice. All right. Just like Mr. Brian Johnson said, you don't want to just copy his shit, but you also don't want to be like, oh, that guy's just crazy. He's not crazy. He's smarter than probably almost all of us. You don't just shit out of fucking billion dollar corporation just by random chance. Take what you can from his protocols, from his teachings, because he has a great YouTube channel. He posts pretty often about stuff he's doing. Whatever it is that doesn't cost a zillion dollars, doesn't make you have a three hour morning routine, but things like healthy eating, some supplements have some promise in uh, anti-aging. One of them, for example, is NMN, a nicotinamide. <laughs> oh, five, no. times, uh, five times faster when you're drunk. Uh, so there's some problems there. So definitely give this guy a follow. Definitely try to learn. And yeah, that NMN, I want to make sure we got that part in because, yeah. He doesn't know the science. That's it's all I could say. I've watched a different video of his, his routine and he shows that he takes NMN and he mentioned some, you know, one article he read on it. So similar to what we were talking about last video. Yeah. So that's it. Yeah, I think overall, I thought you'd be a fan of him and his. Uh, yeah, I. I so by and large, that was pretty solid. Like, again, I think the only thing I would, um, the only major, the only major comment I would have is that I think, you know, he has heard some of the less scientific, uh, discussion about how quickly the technology is advancing in this space. And that has led him to believe that we are maybe farther ahead than we are. But in terms of his recommendations, I mean, you know, I think he gets it pretty much all right. All right. I'm going to have to watch some more of these, this guy's videos. I like yeah, we'll, we'll link them below in case people right. are interested. So. Cool. All right, Matt. Thanks for your time. That was a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah, it was. Uh, thanks, everyone, for watching. Again, if you like this format, let us know. If you don't like it, let us know. We may or may not do more of it. I had fun. So uh, so I guess that's, you know, w one thing to say. Uh, so anyways, uh, as always, any comments or questions, please drop them below. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. And we hope to see you next time on the OptusBand podcast.